We often film moments from our life, but never do we expect them to be our last. So from the journalist killed by a sniper, to a police officer's final breaths, join us. In July 2013, employees at the Egyptian al Horia Weir al Adela newspaper reported that they'd received the bloody camera and mobile phone of their colleague, 26-year-old Ahmed Samir Hassan, along with the news that he'd been shot by a sniper. He'd been filming outside the Republic Guard headquarters in Cairo, where President Mohamed Morsi was being held at the time, when he and 51 Muslim Brotherhood protesters were shot. In the video, a sniper discharges his gun at three unknown targets, before suddenly turning and firing at Ahmed. Take a look. According to the Muslim Brotherhood, their protests had been peaceful, whilst the government spokesman claimed that the shooting began after a terrorist group tried to storm the headquarters. Sometime after 1am, on January 23rd, 1991, 47-year-old Texas Police Constable Darrell Lunsford spotted a suspicious vehicle travelling with apparent fake license plates, and so pulled it over. Inside the car was Baldemar Villarreal, his younger brother Ronaldo, and their accomplice Jesus Cortez. The trio had loaded their car with 31 pounds of marijuana and were driving to Chicago to sell it all. Soon suspicious of the trio, Lunsford asked to look in the trunk and immediately smelt the drug scent. Take a look. Another traffic stop, this time in Garrison, Texas. Another violent confrontation. Constable Darrell Lunsford decides to check the trunk for drugs. It will be the final act of his life. The suspects stab Constable Lunsford as they struggle for his 357 Magnum, then shoot it and run. Because the whole murder was recorded by a dashboard camera, police were able to both identify and apprehend the trio over the next week. At their trial, Baldemar was found to be the shooter and sentenced to life, whilst Ronaldo and Hezes were sentenced to 40 and 30 years each. The videotape has continued to be used to train new officers on how to react to a similar situation, with many talking of it saving their lives. On January 12, 1998, 22-year-old police deputy Kyle Dinkeller of the Lawrence County Sheriff's Office in Georgia pulled over motorist 49-year-old Andrew Howard Brannan for speeding. Unaware to Kyle, however, Brannan was a Vietnam veteran, once considered by superiors to be an outstanding officer, but one who suffered from a number of psychiatric issues due to his service, including depression, bipolar disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Similar to many other veterans of the war though, he never received support for his problems, and so continued to struggle with them throughout his life. According to one psychologist during Brannan's later trial, the lethal interaction with Kyle was likely the result of a flashback to his time in combat. Take a look. Driver, step back here to me. Come on back here for me. Come on back. How you doing today? Good. Come on back here and keep your hands out of your pocket. 
Keep your hands out of your pocket, sir. Sir! You goddamn it, here I am. Shoot my fucking ass. Come here. Here I am, here I am. Sir, come here. 37 radio 1078. Come here, sir. Sir, get sir, back. Who are you calling, Sir, get back. Now, get back. Get back. Sir, get back now. No. Get back. Fuck you. Sir, get back. No. I'm telling you now. Get back, sir. Sir, get back. Sir, I am a goddamn Vietnam combat veteran. Get back. And I am not sir. Sir. Fuck you. Sir, sir, get back now. Get back. Get back. Get back now! 1078, radio 1018! Sir, get back now! Sir, get back now! 16! Sir, get back! Get out of the car now! Sir, get out of the car! I am doing my life! Get back here now! Get to leave your vehicle! Put the gun down! Well, I got me out the gun. I need help. Put the gun down. Put it down now. Put the gun down. Drop the gun now. Two years later, Brennan was found guilty for the murder and sentenced to death. On the day of his execution, on January 13th, 2015, he issued a final statement in which he extended condolences to the Dinkella family and told he was glad to be leaving. He was then executed by lethal injection at the age of 66. On the coast of the Red Sea lies a blue hole, an underwater sinkhole that drops around 314 feet down, and which has earned a reputation as one of the most deadly locations in the world. Despite regulation by authorities, about two divers still die per year exploring it. One of the more famous casualties of the blue hole happened on April 28, 2000, when Israeli Russian diving instructor Yuri Lipsky went diving there. After dropping to around 300 feet, he got nitrogen narcosis and became disorientated. Realising he could no longer escape, it's thought that Yuri took off his oxygen mask to kill himself. Sometime later, his body was retrieved, along with a helmet camera that had recorded his final moments. Take a look.
so that was four people who recorded their own death. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.